final whistle went. It was unbelievable. Oh. It was unbelievable. It was just pandemonium. It's one that I'll I'm never forget. I was just a young boy in the early 80s, it was uh, 1980, I was 23, and I just joined a company called Compass Print. Aberdeen was booming, you know, if, 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 you, if you were prepared to roll your sleeves up and work hard, you could, you could find success in Aberdeen. The city was on fire because the oil industry was really beginning to, to boom. So many new companies were coming into Aberdeen, uh, house prices were rising, uh, people's salaries were increasing, there was a real buzz about the city. And ally that to the football team because with a team that won the league at the, at the end of 79 80. Aberdeen have definitely won the championship. Bringing through young local talent mm -hmm. like Johnny Hewitt, like Neil Cooper, Simi. These guys were coming through, were exciting the fans. The fans were, were desperate to get across to Pretoria on a Saturday. Fergie was beginning to build a team, it was a place to be. day of the, of the Bayern Munich game. The city was buzzing. During your working day, all you could think about was 7.30. Getting along there, getting through the turnstiles, the atmosphere buzzing. Again, a midweek game, the floodlights is on, you can't beat it. We felt <coughs> something special was going to happen, and, uh, and it did. Olgen Taller looking for a chance to shoot. And that's the moment that Aberdeen were dreading. Olgen Taller for the for now, McGee. That's well, I'll tell you, Pataudry was bouncing that night. It was just amazing. Thirteen minutes to go in the Bayern Munich game. We're two one down at home, and Murray and I turned to each other and said exactly the same thing at the same time. We can still do this. From being two one down in the space of two minutes, we were three two up. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! That was one of the best nights of all time. Really. Wonderful. When Aberdeen played Watershy, they were, they were top of the Belgium League and undefeated that season. Hadn't lost a game. And they could beat 5 1 across here. And then we were Gothenburg bound. When we flew out to, to Gothenburg for the final, there were, oh, I don't know how many planes took off from Aberdeen that day. And there was all shapes and sizes of planes. And people. And, and people, yeah. And, and as you do, you're always thinking, what aircraft are we going to board? And you're thinking, I hope I'm not going on that thing. And that'll be lucky if it gets across the North Sea. That day that we flew out, we were fortunate enough to get board a brand new 737 in them days, a company called Orion Airways. Mm -hmm. And as we were taking down the runway, the supporters on board started stamping their feet to be stopped in their tracks by the pilot, <coughs> shouting, gentlemen, gentlemen, would you mind controlling yourself? This is a brand new Boeing 737, not a corporation bus. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I think the boys will do well tonight. Apart from that, uh, I'm out to have a good couple of days.
first place I wanted to go was to see this, the stadium. So we're there, and this guy opens a sliding door, uh, and I start speaking to him, and I said, look, is there any way we can get in? No, no, you can't get in. This is the final no, can't, can't get in. He was a head groundsman. <clears throat> so we were uh, buttering up, and he said, okay, you've got five minutes. You can stay for five minutes, that's all. So into the ground, scampered over the seats, down onto the park. I said to Murray, here's Ian St. John. Me, Murray says, um, how you doing, Ian? Oh, no bad boys, good to see you. How are you doing? And St. John comments, the grass is quite long. The, the Fergie one were happy with us. Well, Jock Steen then walks out. Murray, sharp as a tack, said, how you doing, Jock? Ah, oh, fine boys, how are you? Fergie one were happy with us. Grass, absolutely, son. After I put Jock right on the length of the grass, <laughs> out come uh, Aberdeen to do a training session on the pitch. And of course, Aberdeen just been a big village when you guys, and particularly when you, Andy, watching, <coughs> John Hewitt, Brian Gunn, more and more people came on the scene, the newspapers came on the scene. Unknown to Murray and I, uh, when that TV interview was going on in the stadium, Ian St. John thought it was Swedish TV, but it was actually, just Murray said, ABC or ITV. And of course, it was big news in, back in the UK that Aberdeen, a provincial club, was the European Cup Winners' Cup final against Real Madrid. So it was in news the following morning. And as Kath, my wife, was getting the kids ready for school. And in those days, you had a little 14-inch portable in the kitchen, black and white, probably. Um, uh, when the kids went, Mom, look at the TV. And there is Jockstein, Murray, Ian St. John and myself. And Kath, quite nonplussed, said, oh, well, at least they've arrived safely. So the Dons did a training session for, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half or so. It was great. And uh, as they disappeared back down the tunnel, out come Real Madrid. Great players like Uli Stielicke, you know, the... Weren't too impressed with them for the work. We weren't impressed no, with them and we're no, giving them a bit of stick as no, well at the same no, time. No. You know what I mean? We were telling them what uh, Simpson and Cooper Absolutely. was going to be doing to them in the, in the night of the game and all the rest of it. And uh, I'm not sure if they understood what we were saying, but, uh, th but they got a surprise because Phil and I had a full set of teeth. The night before the game, we were at a burger van and a bit noisy. And I got, I, I got a tap on the shoulder. Turned around, the guy says, can you help me in broken English? And I said, sure. He says, um, I have a man in, 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 in uh, my taxi. I don't know what he's saying. So I went across the taxi and there's this guy lying absolutely guttered in the back seat. The driver said, I don't know where he wants to go. And the guy says, Herbar, Herbar. And every hotel in Gothenburg is hotel, whatever. So the driver is saying, I don't know hotel, Herbar. And the boy's, no, no, harbour. And I'm saying to the guy, the harbour. He's, he's off the boat. Oh, the harbour. But that's what I said, harbour. Who was sick in the hotel room carpets? Uh, right, I've got to be honest here, it was Phil. Uh, and I've got uh, to be honest, uh, it was Murray. To be fair to him, I think I think he got a bad pizza earlier on the evening. Aye, I, I and, did. Uh, and how did he clean it up? Well, he... Um, well, he, he, he didn't clean it up immediately. No, he left it. He, he wanted to clean it up immediately, which was about uh, two in the morning, but I decided that a, a, a well-soaked towel laid on top of it might just do the job. Unfortunately, when we got up at eight in the morning, it uh, was still there, so a hoover in the cupboard was then used to try and hoover it up, and uh, that worked quite well, actually. We happened to be going back into the room in the afternoon just as uh, the cleaner was coming out, and she didn't look well. into city centre Gothenburg and we're looking for saint pierre Tite where well, we're sitting and there was five Real Madrid supporters next to us and they were looking down at us. Do you think you should tell us? I, I won't tell the whole story of what my answer was to them but they, they, they were fairly confident in suggesting <coughs> that uh, they would win 5 now. and uh, their skipper Juanito would score 3 on the night and uh, I, I, I replied with my fingers as well is suggesting that maybe he might only score two. The rain was torrential the day of the game. So we found this pizza place. I'm looking out the door and I said to Maria, look at this little geezer out here. And this guy wanders past. Raincoat, dawn scarf, uh, soaked to the skin, kilt under the raincoat, carrying an Asda bag. So he comes in 
to the, the pizza place and this maitre d well turned out goes out and he said to the uh, the guy uh, yes can i help you sir whereupon this little geezer uh, uh, uttered the wonderful words ah you never seen two boys for bucky have you and of course we're sitting there just in absolute uh, uh, hysterics good evening and welcome to gothenburg the big moment is now arrived for the two teams young Aberdeen players i'm sure have been very anxious to the, field. the atmosphere was was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Although there was only 17,000 in, in the stadium, all around about us was packed with Dons fans. At Real Madrid start the European Cup Winners Cup final, Aberdeen's first ever European final, and the match now underway. Camacho for Real Madrid. To see your, your team come up on a board, <coughs> Aberdeen, and the name below it, Real Madrid. Honestly, it, it was it was a dream. It was something that he only experienced in Subutio. This guy warming up actually <laughs> on the track. This this was over the security fencing. He strips off his track suit and he's got a Don's kit on. And he's doing press-ups and he's as though he's a sub. He was just an <laughs> Aberdeen fan. And of course the laughter all around about us, because he was quite a well-known guy yeah. that's in amateur football. And uh, it was amazing. It's the rain still falling very heavily indeed. The early goal settled us and settled the team. It's McLeish, the flagship black. And Aberdeen take the lead. And then a short pass back from McLeish. Out came Leighton, took the guy's legs and it's it's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> When you're playing against a team of that calibre, I mean, for them to get an equaliser fairly early, you, you, you do fear. But the Dons team were full of tough guys, you know, streetwise guys, talent on that side. You always believed, no matter what Real Madrid would throw at us, that the Dons would absorb yeah. it and go back and punish them. And it proves right. Delightful little chip forward. I'd been with John Hewitt on the Sunday. Uh, and uh, he, John had said to me, he says, um, I think I'll score on Wednesday night. And I remember saying to him, John, you don't even know if you're playing. He went, I know, I know, I know, but I, I've just got a funny feeling I'm going to score. And of course, I saw him the week after, and he went, I told you. We were right in line with John Hewitt who scored the goal. I remember going like this, almost trying to nod it in, and you just saw him going up seconds before the goalkeeper, and the Aberdeen fans went berserk. And then they got a free kick right at the death and they whistled past the post and the ref ordered a retake and I couldn't look, I really couldn't look, I turned away and next thing, Murray's, they've missed. When that final whistle went, it was unbelievable, oh. it was unbelievable. It was just pandemonium. Yeah. When you think a provincial club like Aberdeen, who, you know, seven, eight years earlier were fighting relegation, and here's us at the pinnacle of Europe, um, and winning a European trophy against Real Madrid. I mean, it's it's um, it's surreal. The Scottish Cup, the league championship, and now the biggest prize of all, the European Cup Winners' Cup. 
a wonderful time to, to be an Aberdeen fan. It really was. It really was. Great memories. 20,000 fans here at the Tottenham Stadium greet the Aberdeen heroes. It's one that uh, I'll and never forget. The Dawn Stars, who last night won the European Cup for us, by beating the legendary Real Madrid. You know, I come from Aberdeen, proud to be an Aberdonian. I think you should support your local team through thick and thin. We've been fortunate that we've seen some wonderful, wonderful times uh, for, for, for Aberdeen. It's pride and it's, it's heritage as well. You know I mean, being brought up uh, in the city and going to Petaudry from probably the age of five or six, it's a big part of our life. And um, nothing pleases us better than to see the Dons, to see them playing well, and probably above all things is to go to Glasgow like we did in the 80s and come back with success. I think that's the thing that we're all looking <clears> forward to in the future again. And uh, let's hope we can see it. Just look at these remarkable scenes. There are flags, there are banners, there are scars. And there are supporters of all ages, of all shapes and sizes. And it really is a fantastic evening. You smell it, Gothenburg plug. Oh, I pizza. Pizza, I can. Very drunk. Okay, I'll be better.